He was a born statesman, but the All Blacks' next captain had quite a different quality. Brian Lahore, a farmer from Ekatahuna, was a country boy who had greatness thrust upon him, and he wore it well. Brian Lahore grew up in the Wairarapa, and like Winneray before him, his sporting talents were not confined to rugby. He was a provincial rep tennis player as well, but rugby had that extra attraction. Well, I guess like a, about 100,000 other little New Zealand boys, my ambition was to be an All Black. The young Lahore was what today would call hyperactive. He was very fit, but the future All Black captain was so skinny, people actually worried about him. In fact, they're supposed to go to health camp, I think, in about the, just after the war, when they did surveys on kids at, uh, in schools and that weren't getting enough to eat, but uh, which horrified my mother, of course, because there was never any lack of food on, in our household. Lahore trialled for the Wairarapa Primary School reps and made the team, so the story goes, without actually touching the ball. You know, I was a little wee shy country boy. I think I was playing flanker where, you know, if you can't think of any place to put a guy, you put him as flanker. And uh, I chased the ball around all day and night, but I just didn't quite touch it. But I got on the team, and I think that selector is a marvellous selector. He's still a friend of mine now. <laughs> Lahore's provincial rugby began at the age of 18, and though he's remembered as a number eight, the last man down in the All Black scrum, his first few years for Wairarapa Rapper were played at breakaway. For a scrum, and after a series in fact, Lahore was selected at number eight for the 63-64 All Black tour of the British Isles without Bristol ever having played in that chance. position. He well player. remembers he the shock of that announcement. They went through the locks, they went through the flankers, and my name wasn't in either of those, so you know how you sort of think, oh well, back to the farm. And then, as amazingly enough, uh, I was called out at number 30 as number eight, a uh, position that, funnily enough, I had never played in my life, even, at, uh, even in social rugby. But it was amazing how, uh, what an inspirational choice it was because it's a position that absolutely suited my game. It, it was made for me, really. Earlier that year, Lahore had married Pam Young. She too had grown up in the country and just as well. Through the long All Black tours ahead, someone had to look after their farm and three children. In 1965, Lahore was 25 and last man down for what he describes as a Rolls Royce All Black pack that included Winneray, the Meads brothers, Colin and Stan, Kel Tremaine and Ken Gray. It was heady stuff, but a year later, the number eight became the number one, ahead of several more senior players. Well, it didn't worry me at all because I had no illusions about being captain and... Uh, you know, had no desire to be an all-black captain. I was captain of King Country team and I thought that was my level. So in the end, I think it was the right decision, even though I might have been a bit snaky at the time and thought I should have got it. <laughs> he was very tolerant, understanding. He had a great uh, grip of the game. When it came to leading, he led by example. Uh, I was very fortunate that I had the support of some very close and loyal friends, and they still are. Ken Gray, Kirl Tremaine and uh, Colin Meads. Now those guys, each of them came and said, we, we, we're we here, we're going to support you, you know, we're all in it together and uh, boy, that made my job a lot easier. And... Brian Lahore makes his debut as captain of New Zealand in the first test of 1966 against Campbell Lamerton's British Isles 15. Like Winneray, eight years before him, Lahore scored a try in his debut test match as captain. Lahore races up outside and the New Zealand captain forces his way over for a fine try. I don't think I scored a lot of tries for the All Blacks, but it's nice to score one, I guess, on, on the, the, your debut day as, as captain. I think I was just pleased to get it over with. I was just pleased that we, uh, we won that day. In fact, Lahore led the All Blacks to an awesome 14 straight test victories, spanning four years, a record achievement for an All Black captain. The All Blacks were unbeaten when they faced the Barbarians for the last match of their 1967 Tour of Europe, but 10 minutes from the end, defeat seemed inevitable. Two minutes of the match to go. New Zealand's unbeaten record, almost gone. Not quite. Laid log in. Out to Curtin. Davis. This is a great chance for Tony Steele. It must be a try if he passes. Oh, and he had the spare man, but it is a try for McRae. We were leading 6-3, and I thought, oh, to be on a winning side against the All Blacks. And Myron Joseph was the referee, and he was a Welsh guy. And I remember telling Myron, come on, Myron, you know, turn the old grip, get forward, you know, three minutes, what a... And, of course, typical All Blacks, they scored two tries in the last three minutes. Again, come second. Tony
In 1969, Wales made an historic first tour to New Zealand. In a word, the men in black walloped the Welsh. And the man who inspired them to greatness was their captain, Brian Lahore. Lahore's wave of success extended through the beginning of the 1970 tour of South Africa. By the time of the first test against the Springboks, his All Blacks hadn't lost for 52 matches. But this was their Waterloo. Yeah, we were actually very shocked by the, the intensity of, of the South African side. The Springbok Test Series was lost 3-1, to one, and not long after, Lahore realised something about himself. You've got to be hungry, you've got to want to do it. Um, and I didn't know whether I had uh, that fire in my belly still. And I came home and uh, said to Pam that uh, I'm going to retire. She nearly she probably fell out of the kitchen, I guess. So. so the man from Ekatahuna stepped down from rugby's top job. His achievements were obvious and outstanding. But what made Brian Lahore special? Brian Lahore was a fellow who had... Um, he was a, just an average fellow when he, he joined the All Black teams and had the responsibility of captaincy thrown upon him. A responsibility which he wore, I think, at the end with greatness. He often used to come to you and say, well, come on, we need a bit of help here. Some of the greatest rugby I probably played was when Brian became captain because, um, you know, he'd asked me for that help. I think the, the best captains are born, not made. I think you can actually uh, probably be taught how to, how to captain a side, but if you have to really think about doing the right things at the right, right time, I think it's too late sometimes. 16 years later, he was back in the public eye as the coach of the All Blacks, who won the very first Rugby World Cup in 1987. He's back on the farm again now, but Brian Lahore, the country boy, will always be one of the legends of All Black history. I would like to be remembered as, a, as just a, a very down-to-earth, genuine fellow who had a, a, a lot of caring for the, for the players that I had with me and under me. The year Brian Lahore played his last test, an 18-year-old from Taranaki, was making his mark in university rugby. Like Lahore, he was from a farming background, and he too would become a great All Black captain. The 